Hey, this is Michael Lindsay, and as you can see behind me, we got a nice little photo here of the Honda CR electric prototype. I did a short little video on this here day when it was revealed at the Tokyo Motorcycle Show, and since then I've been in contact with Honda's US, or I should say American Honda's press officer for the off-road division, the guy I usually deal with, and we've been going back and forth a little bit on questions on this bike. They did open up to us and say, hey, uh, if you have you know, some inquiries about any of the specs of this motorcycle or general questions about its development, fire them over. We'll see what answers we can get. So I shot over an email with about 20 or so questions and we have a few answers. Not to be surprising, a few of them are the no, you know, not available, not available, not available answers. But there's a few nuggets in here that definitely tells us a little bit about the bike or a little more about what Honda is doing with it. So I'll just make this simple before I get into it any further. I'll go down the list of questions I sent over. Uh, first question, is the bike fully rideable and operational? Yes, the CR Electric prototype display model has been tested on one of Honda's test courses in Japan. Was it built from a production CR250R, sorry, CRF250R or CRF450R chassis? The 2018 CRF250R frame was optimized for this power unit and battery was their response. So they did start with a CRF250R frame for this bike. My third question, is the Mugen team from the Isle of Mon TT Zero bike project helping with the powertrain of this bike? This one gets a little interesting. First answer is unknown. The prototype was jointly developed at Honda R&D of Japan. Honda was in charge of building the prototype and the provider at MTech produced the battery power unit. Now another photo popped up from the Tokyo Motorcycle Show that shows the, I guess you'd call it second generation of the T-Rex concept bike that Mugen was working on. And it's basically this exact motorcycle except with different bodywork. So at this point, it's a little bit easy to say the unknown. You can kind of figure out that probably the Mugen team that has been de developing a lot of the electric powertrain stuff for Honda's motorcycle projects in Zero TT the Isle Mon TT projects is probably involved with this bike considering that their concept bike that they brought literally runs the exact same frame and powertrain unit that you see in this bike. Is the liquid, sorry, on to question four. Is the liquid cooling system just for show or is it functional? Detail specifications are not available for this prototype model. This is where we get into a couple answers there like that, but just from looking at a few more photos, as I mentioned before, the bike does have a liquid cooling system, which is a little bit different than the Alta that we saw before because the system is external. There's actually two radiators in their standard positions, albeit they're probably about a third of the original capacity. They're quite a bit smaller, but just from looking around each side of the casing of this motor, you can see the actual plumbing going in and out of the engine. This would be interesting because one of the initial problems on the original Altas was the heat sink issue, which would cause it to go into limp mode. Definitely judging by looking at the frame that they've put this motor in, I can't imagine that they have a larger battery pack capacity than the Alta, but the ability to cool it externally might be able to control the temperatures better from the, I think it's the heat release of when you're releasing the energy out of the battery pack that causes part of that. But if they're able to better control those heat issues, they might be able to get a longer lifespan out of a slightly smaller battery. That's just, of course, my thoughts just by looking at it and just the little bit of experience I had with the Alta. Uh, fifth question, does it have a fly-by-wire system for the throttle? Detailed specifications are not available for this prototype model. That was the answer. But easy enough by looking at the housing is quite a bit bigger on the throttle side and all you see is a small little electrical wire going down to the controller unit. There's no throttle cable, so I mean, that one's pretty much a given. Question six, does it have a single speed gear drive or does it have some sort of gearbox or CVT style transmission? Detail specifications are not available for prototype models. That one I don't know how to answer either. Looking at the bike, there is no shift lever, so you would assume it's a single gear driven unit, albeit the buttons up top, the change size of the case, you never know. Um, based on what we've seen with electric bikes so far on the dirt side, you would have to suppose it's probably single gear driven. Question seven, is there a reported weight on the prototype? Detail specifications are not available for prototype models, so we didn't get an answer for that one. Question eight, battery pack size or energy pack size? Uh, the answer was it's a lithium ion battery pack unit in single pack format. 
Details on number of cells are not available. So they're basically saying it's a lithium ion battery pack and it's in a one stage, like a single system pack, but they won't give us the number of cells that are available in that pack. Question nine, kilowatt output from the pack. Answer, detailed specifications are not available for prototype models. Question 10, how many watts per kilogram? So I was basically asking how many watts can it put out for the weight of the overall bike? Once again, I expect this answer. Detailed specifications are not available for prototype models. Question 11, max RPM of electric motor. Uh, this one I was curious because the Alta is 14,000. RPM is what the electric motor spins. Once again, detailed specifications are not available for prototype models. Uh, number 12, reported horsepower and torque output. Answer, detailed specifications are not available for prototype models. We're, we're getting a little bit closer here. Those are definitely the, uh, the questions I'd say I asked that I didn't really expect an answer on, being that it's a prototype bike and I'm asking for very specific numbers. Uh, that to me was kind of obvious that that wasn't gonna happen, but it's always worth asking. Um, <laughs> 13, what are all the switches on the handlebars for? Are they for mapping controls, shifting, or other electronic controls or processes? Answer, Honda cannot comment at this time. Uh, question 14, will this bike be present at the ICMA show later this fall? The answer is simply unknown. Uh, that one I'm gonna take as, I think there's a decent chance we'll see it there, considering a lot of these motorcycle manufacturers like to bring projects like this to ICMA if they're getting into some state of development. Um, so I don't know, the unknown is a little bit different from the rest of their answers, so I'm just gonna go with uh, there, there's a good chance, maybe. Question 15, is this bike just for concept show or is it an active test bike for future product development? This model, or sorry, the answer, this model was developed as an electric motorcycle that endures motocross riding over severe terrain. Honda will use technical know-how gained from the CR electric prototype to continue development of on and off-road electric motorcycle sports performance models. Honda aims to tackle EV's unique characteristics and issues and apply knowledge gain in future development of retail EV motorcycles. Question 16, is the battery pack removable or swappable on the prototype? Honda cannot comment. Question 17, and this one is, this one to me is the most telling because this is one of the most outright answers they give in the entire thing about, I think, what we can expect to see from them product-wise in the future. Is this prototype meant to match the power of or be the equivalent of a 254 stroke, 354 stroke, or 454 stroke motocross model? That was my question, and Honda's answer was, Honda is aiming for a 250cc equivalent performance model. So, at least we know what they're working on. What, uh, whatever they try to turn this model into, uh, into a production standpoint, it's kind of cool to hear them actually say they have, uh, at least with this, they've, they've kind of stamped an equivalency of what they want to do with it. So other than that, that's all I have for info. There's a little bit more floating around the internet. A uh, website called Enduro21.com actually had a lot of these really good photos. They must have had somebody at the event or somebody they know. So there was a couple observations from them as well. And just a little bit more conjecture floating around between just other videos I've seen. Uh, a couple things I guess I can comment on or maybe slightly correct. I saw a few people commenting about it looking like a works edition uh, in this form that like maybe that's what Honda was going for. This is definitely for show, per se, for even though this is called a prototype, I would definitely throw that on to giving it that little bit of concept feel. They really wouldn't test with works components like this. This is beyond what we saw in the works edition, which was just some coded suspension. This actually has true race team works forks and a two-piece billet shock body. Uh, you know, Nissan factory billet brakes, HRC hubs, HRC titanium uh, foot pegs and brackets, their triple clamps, a lot of goodies like that. These aren't items they would actually test with if they were going forward with a production bike, definitely just to give the bike a little more of an eye-catching look. If you look at the Mugen concept bike I talked about really quick, the photo from it's pretty rough, but that one, other than the crazy plastics and the black frame, actually has pretty much all production parts on it, otherwise that would be uh, associated with the bike. Uh, the other thing I saw a few people ask if, if you'll think that Honda had an Alta to test or another electric motorcycle of that type, um, I'm sure like every one of these OEMs, they buy a lot of their competitors' bikes every year and put them through different phases of R&D and, and durability testing to see what they're up against. 
And in the case of Honda, they definitely have one or two guys on their R&D staff that have ridden the Alta, uh, including one who may have been involved in the testing a little bit. So uh, they definitely know some feedback of what that bike was like and what they're doing here. And as I comment in my other video, I think the easiest uh, way to describe why we're seeing this motor and battery pack in a production CRF250R frame is the, the key point that Honda would wanna start with when developing an electric motocross model is they would want to have that CRF feel. So they're gonna start with a bike that they already know handles really well, that everybody's really praising for its overall characteristics, which is their 250 frame. They would put that motor in it, this electric drive, and see how that affects the inertia, the twisting, all the forces displaced onto the frame under riding conditions to see if it maintains that CRF feel and then go from there on how they're going to have to adjust the chassis to maintain that while keeping it as close to their, you know, petrol powered bikes as possible. Because definitely if they come out with a very competitive electric performance motocross bike, biggest pitch they'd want to have is, hey, if you like a CRF 450, if you like a CRF 250R, We've got the electric version that feels just like it from the moment you sell it. You're going to feel at home. It's going to feel like a Honda. So that would basically explain why the bike looks like it does now. Um, to me, it's pretty interesting because the typical twin spar frame can be a little bit restrictive for the battery pack size. But like I said, if they're able to, with the liquid cooling system, kind of, you know, get a little bit better efficiency out of the pack, maybe they can get away with the tighter spacing. But I also wouldn't be surprised as, as this bike gets closer to some type of true production model if the frame changes to accommodate a different style pack or motor. But anyways, that's all I got. Uh, if you like this style content, bike reviews, more first looks like this throughout the year when new tech info becomes available, make sure you hit subscribe. And that's all I got.